Daredevil Season 2, Episode 3, New York's Finest. Now, I thought Episode 2 was actually a really good episode, and it was, but this one, I think, was probably the best episode the series has had so far. Um, you know, they had a great action scene, of course, that I think definitely rivals um, the scene from the first season, from Episode 2, the end fight scene. But the first half of this episode was just talking. It was just Matt Murdock and Frank Castle just talking with each other. And I love that. We got to hear, you know, their ideals and how, you know, of course we know Matt's basically, you know, stop people but don't kill them. And then we kind of know Frank's, but we really got to hear it from him. And I really enjoyed that. I thought it was great for them. Um, Karen had a really cool moment. Foggy had a really awesome moment. Foggy had two uh, good moments. I didn't mention it for the last episode, but he had an awesome moment there too. But I'll get to all that stuff. But their conversation on the roof, I really, really loved. Because we never, we've never seen Matt really kind of go all out in a conversation with anyone like this like he's been mad and he's kind of yelled at people but they're like yelling over each other and he was saying stuff he's never said before and, and it was just really entertaining to watch that so we hear you know a bit about frank and how he was of course an army man an army man and it, it was just pretty cool it's like you know I, I think one of my favorite lines was definitely when he was like you know you ever been in war and i was like no he's like then don't talk about it I thought that was a really awesome line. I was like, that's actually pretty cool. And so they're just talking with each other, and Matt's like, you know, if you go around doing what you do, then you're snuffing out the last little flicker of hope that people have to redeem themselves. And Frank is just like, there is no hope. Like, these people just go around, and they continue to hurt other people. So, and this was I, this was in one of the trailers. It was probably, like, the first trailer or second trailer. But he was like, you know, you put people down, they get back up. I put them down, and they stay down. That I really enjoyed. And then that was, like, right before Matt called him um, crazy and stuff. And apparently Frank doesn't really like to be called insane. Because that was, like, the only thing this whole episode that seemed to really trigger him. And it was like, you know, you're crazy. And it was like, what would you say? It was like, you know, you're unhinged. And then he said, you're insane. And that's when he knocked him out. I was like, okay. Nothing really seems to phase him except for being called crazy or insane. And I don't know if that's something that kind of resulted in you know, whoever he lost, and I won't get into who, you know, his comic book story for anyone who doesn't know his origins, but I thought that was pretty interesting, I was like, okay, so nothing seems to, you know, their whole conversation, they're arguing back and forth, only thing that ever made him mad is that he was called crazy and insane, so I thought that was definitely something worth noting, but it was a great conversation, or argument, I guess, and so I, I really, really enjoy getting to hear them kind of have their back and forth through most of this episode, we had a really cool scene, where uh, Frank talks to the other army guy, and he's like, you know, if you make a noise, then, you know, I'll kill him and stuff. And, of course, um, he's not going to kill anyone, or at least he didn't in this episode, because um, the guy was innocent. But he's like, you know, do I have to really spell it out for you? And he's like, basically, I'm taking out people that need to be killed, so he doesn't kill innocent people. So I really enjoyed that. You know, they kind of put that out there, once again, for people who didn't know that the Punisher doesn't just randomly kill people. He's only He only kills criminals. And I thought that was really good. And then we have, like, the other stuff with Matt. Um, you know, kind of a missing Matt in this episode. We have Foggy trying to find his best friend. And I really enjoyed that. It was like, okay, Foggy's going on the search. Uh, we get to see Claire in this episode, which is pretty cool. And they do a reference to Jessica Jones, which I thought was pretty interesting. Because they mentioned she was helping someone else, you know, who's even stronger than Matt. And because she helped him out and she basically left work. She kind of got screwed over, so now she has, like, you know, basically a 24-hour shift because she kind of took off work. So I thought it was cool that they made that reference and stuff. And Foggy had a really awesome moment. He's trying to help her out and stuff. Or, you know, he's following her around, and then she makes him help out. And then he has a great moment because in the last episode, when they first met Reyes, despite how things kind of turned out in this episode, he kind of shut them down when she tried to, you know, push them out of the way. Like, hey, you guys, you get the heck out of here because you're out of your league. He went through all this, you know, he said a bunch of stuff that I don't know because I'm not a lawyer, but he went through all these different things, and it was super cool. I was like, man, that makes me want to be a lawyer just to know all that stuff. So it was, he had a really awesome scene. And then he has another great scene in this episode where he stops two gang members because basically... They, when they do that hospital scene, they do, like, a very long shot where it's just a bunch of people. And it seems like every, maybe, like, every other conversation, it was somebody like, it was that guy or it was that guy. Because everyone assumes that it's someone else that they've, you know, that they have a rivalry with. And, of course, it's all just Frank blowing up a bunch of people, stabbing everybody. 
And so I was like, that's kind of interesting. It was like, that's pretty cool that, you know, he's taking out so many people. It's just everyone's in there. It's like, it had to be you. It had to be you because we're rivals. And I just thought that was actually pretty entertaining. So they do this whole thing. Then we have two gang members going at each other. And Foggy actually calms them down. And I was like, man, that was a really cool moment from him again. So that was really nice. Um, of course, he finds out that Matt isn't in any hospital. So he's still going to be freaking out by the next episode. Um... Well, Matt escaped, so I guess, you know, he'll, they'll be fine. But I, that was really cool. And then Karen had a, a very awesome moment as well where she goes to the assistant district attorney. And she's like, hey, you know, the person you work for really sucks. And she's trying to bury us. And I need to make sure that we can't get buried. And here's, like, I think she gave him, like, four files of former assistant district attorneys. All of which completely screwed over in life and just fired because Reyes was mad that they couldn't cover something up or maybe things just didn't go exactly as she wanted them to. And even, I believe it was like the very the final case that uh, Karen kind of threw at the guy was like, everyone got screwed over except for Reyes. Like, that was like just widespread misconduct. And a bunch of people got fired. But she just walked right out, no big deal. And you're the new assistant district attorney. So where do you think things, you know, even if they, she takes us down, how long do you think you really have? So I really enjoyed that. And she convinced me, he's like, you know, I'm going to leave my office and get security. And I don't want any contact or anything like that. And he gives her the file. So she has all this new information for the case. And she has a file with Frank's name on it. Um, the F. Castle file. It was, you know, it was Frank. I'm sure that was obvious. But for anyone who may not have seen the name, it said F. Castle. So it was for Frank. And... I'm assuming that what that x-ray was, was a bullet hole because he was shot in the head. And once again, that may or may not be uh, a part of kind of his origin thing or something. So that I thought was very interesting. And it showed that they actually knew who the heck they were going after. Because the fact that he even said his name, that really surprised me. Because I know, you know, he's kind of a mystery at this point. It's like, okay, yeah, he goes around, but... You know, that's pretty much it. It was like, no, they have an actual file on him that says Frank Castle. He might, I'm assuming he's just a suspect at this point, and they don't know that it's him. But they probably do. I mean, they have a file on him. And at this point, he's been like a ghost, like the killing ghost or something. And no one has done anything about him. So the fact that they even had a case or had a, a file on him, even if it was just an x-ray, I'm assuming that means they know exactly who he is. And they, you know, that's kind of the big evidence that they have, is that they know who he is. He's, of course, just staying hidden. So that kind of surprised me. That really surprised me that they even had that file. And then it's just, like, mysterious x-ray, just giant x-ray picture um, of his face and everything. So I thought that was definitely very interesting. So looking forward to the next one. I started the next episode. Unfortunately, I couldn't get to finish it, so I've seen, like, the first ten minutes of the next episode. So I'm looking forward to finishing that tonight. Um, I would love to be able to get through this whole season by the weekend, but I also have a ton of homework, so I'm trying to balance it out. And I'm probably going to um, have to watch a bunch of episodes in a row before I'm even able to review them because I won't have a lot of time to just sit and watch and review because I'll be around a bunch of other people. So probably have to do that. Hopefully I do get to finish the whole season by the weekend because I want to kind of put these out really early. That's like the only thing I don't like about these is because they come out and I'm like, I'm about to spend a solid 12 hours just watching and reviewing like one thing. But fortunately it's good. I really enjoy it. So I don't think I'm going to have an issue with that. It's just being able to do it is kind of the issue. But definitely enjoyed this episode. Really loved it. Um, I guess I should talk about the end scene. I basically I skipped over the whole second half of the episode. Um, well, I, I shouldn't say it was the second half, but that was about, I feel like it was 10 minutes. It had to be over 10 minutes long, that ending fight scene, which I think it may have been about 15 minutes. I don't know. I, I was probably just like in a weird place where I couldn't tell how much time was really passing, but it was really crazy. Like that was a great fight scene and, you know, it's really fun. Like, oh, Grotto is in this one. He dies. That really sucked. Um, we do find out that he kill an old lady because she was in the house after he killed basically his assignment so frank puts matt in a great position also one of the best parts of the episode because i was like i know i was assuming i'm like either he's gonna get out of it or he's not gonna be able to break these chains off because he was struggling and it seemed like uh that's what they were playing at early on that he kind of bent the chains a little bit but i was like all right either he's gonna get out 
and somehow save this guy, or he's just going to end up watching him get shot in the head, or, you know, whatever. And so, he's struggling, he's not able to get out, and then he uses the gun to blow uh, the chains off. He breaks free, and as he's running at Frank, Frank still shoots Grotto. So, he's dead. He Like, he dies right there, and Matt has to deal with that, and he, you know, he, he takes Frank out, and he, he knocks him unconscious. And then he's like, you know, why didn't you shoot him? And he's just like, I'm sorry, because that's not what he does. And I thought that was a great scene. But then it led to a very epic um, action sequence. So all the bikers are coming up. Matt's got a revolver duct taped to his hand, and he's got a chain. Um, I think it had, that was like the chain that had the padlock on it, so it's locked to his hand, his other hand. So he's scaring Frank out because he's not going to leave him up there to get, you know, killed by a bunch of um, gang members. Carrying him out, puts him in the um, elevator. Everything's about to be fine. And then the old guy um, that Frank talked to comes out, and he's about to get beat up. And I love the way they shot that, because it's right next to Matt. And it's like, the door's just about to close. It's like, boom. And he puts his hand right in there, opens it up. And I'm like, this is about to be an action scene. And he destroyed everybody in that whole freaking thing. I mean, somehow, they managed. he managed to hit the button on the elevator, and it took longer for the elevator to get down than it took him to beat, like, two dozen people. up. That had to be at least 20 guys or something. Because that's how many they kind of showed when they were all running out. And it starts off pretty simple. And he was really, it was really cool that he, like, tricked everybody to use the gun. And then he actually clicked it and, and he smiled because it's like, there are no bullets. And then he's just beating people up. He's, like, you know, busting all the lights out so it's harder for them to see. And um, he's kind of doing this Ghost Rider thing because he had the chain and stuff. And that was really awesome. He was doing, like, some, like, Scorpion-type stuff, too, because he was, like, whipping, um, I think he did, like, four or five different times where he threw the chain and whipped it around somebody's neck. And it was just amazing. Every time he did it, I was like, that's really sweet. And then he would hit someone with it, and he would just, like, you know, blocking and punching. And, and that's one of the best things about the show. They have people that actually fight people because every movie... TV, so even in video games this happens, it'll be one person versus the hero, and it's like a dozen guys, like half a dozen dudes in one room, and it's like one guy at a time, and they kind of had that a little bit in this, because um, and it, it made sense in a, in a way because of how narrow the area was, because um, I think the hallway was really one of the few places, like the very beginning and like the very end were like the only two places that they could actually gang up on him, and they really did it at the end. When one guy flat out just grabbed him and the other guy was just beating him up, I was like, that's real life where if there are two people and one guy grabs you, it's just like, hey, I'll hold him and you just punch him in the stomach a bunch and just beat him in the face. So I love that they do that where more than one person actually comes at him at a time. And if it is one person at a time, it makes sense because you won't have a guy with a crowbar is not going to just swing when you, you're fighting against someone else because it's like, I've seen him do flips and kicks and all this crazy stuff. And he's fighting my guy. They're basically, like, this close to each other. I'm not going to try to run in the middle because I'll just end up hitting my friend. Or, you know, I just, I'll just i miss, and then I'll get beat up in the middle, and I'll totally miss my opportunity. So I love the way that they always, it makes sense. It's not just, like, one guy at a time and one guy at a time. If it's one guy at a time, it's because Matt socks somebody so hard they got, they're on the ground. They're kind of recuperating a little bit. And then in the rare cases where they aren't already knocked down, like at the bottom of the stair was like the one point uh, when the guy had the crowbar. That was like the one time I was like, maybe he could have attacked him, but they really were so close where I was like, he's basically like right behind his friend. He's like at a bit of an angle, but there wasn't enough space for him to just run right at Matt. And then he tried to, and of course, Matt like took him right down. But love the fight scene. Um, all Just the way they had the camera work was just amazingly well done i really love that because they did some really they did some really slick editing where like they would do it where it would get to uh, matt's back and then they would kind of pull out again and so that was like um that's a really easy way to edit and i, I don't mind that because it was well done so i love the fact that they made the editing nice and slick and it looked like one truly it looked like one really long shot and it was just well done. I was like, that was really awesome. He's fighting all these people, um, going down the freaking stairwell, which was great. And, like, this is one of the moments when he whipped the guy uh, with the chain. And I, he, like, I forgot what angle they were at, but he basically pulled the guy down by his neck. And he flipped off the balcony and landed on, like, I think he went down maybe two stories, I guess, because he went past, man, and I believe it was above him. So he went down, like, two full stories and just landed on his back. He was, like, 
just destroying everyone. It was so much. He beat up so many people. I could. I lost count because I'm like, there are so many people coming coming at him on the stairwell. It was crazy. So, like, he kicks guys down the stairs. People end up behind him, and he dodges them and flips, or he just turns around and hits them straight in the face. And then eventually he got rid of the gun at the end. But it was really good. And like when he whipped the guy at the very end, when he did the backflip and he whips the guy's neck so that he has like a base to stand on all in a sense. And then he does the backflip. So he pulls that guy down and then he takes out the final dude. And all this stuff happens. Frank wakes up and he takes off and he's gone. And I was like, this is, that was a crazy freaking scene. So I really, really love the way that they ended this episode. It was an amazing action sequence. Um, I don't know if we're going to get another one of those again, but the action, obviously with them already being Daredevil officially, we've gotten way more action than, you know, the first season just in these, well, not more than the whole season, but, uh, from the start, we've gotten way more action than we did from season one. So really loving how they're kind of kicking up the action. And that was one of the things I was wondering, I was like, I wonder how well, because of course with it being such a great first season, that was one of the things where it's like, man, I really hope they can, you know, keep it up. And I, I figured they would. And I was like, okay, story-wise, it was pretty clear uh, by this episode that they definitely could. And, you know, I was like, oh, man, I hope they can kind of balance everything and it all plays out well. And this episode really showed that they could definitely do that. And then, you know, the ending fight scene showed that they are not skimping at all on what they want to do for the great action sequences. And even if this is the only one, it could be just like the one from the first scene. And I'm totally fine with that because I know that that took a lot for them to do. Especially that because that was, you know, the in season one, it's like they probably had a camera hooked up to the ceiling. And they could just move it back and forth. And it's in this one hallway. They didn't go in the rooms and stuff like that. You could see it as it went past. And it would be a couple seconds here, a couple seconds in that room. But mostly it was the hallway. And this was like hallway... I think that was literally like five minutes straight just on that stairwell of him fighting people and they're above him and then they're, they're in the middle of it and they're below him and stuff like that. So I know that took a lot so I'm finding that's the only scene like that this season. I would love for there to be more than one but one of those per season would just be amazing because visually it looks really awesome and then it's like it's just it's so cool because it's not like here's the camera and there they are and action so it's like they're right behind him and they're moving around him and it just keeps going and that just makes it look more realistic and that's what I really, what I really love about it so I was really happy uh, with this episode I was like okay this really proved to me any possible doubts I could have had were like completely wiped away I was like I, I'm kind of a little worried somewhat that it may not live up to the expectation because it does have so much hype after what they did you know after they're doing such an amazing job on the first season it's one of those things where it's like, I hope it lives up to the hype. And this one definitely proved, like, there, it's going to be fine. I'm not even remotely worried anymore. Rest of the season, I'm just happy. Um, like I said, I, I saw a little bit of the next episode, and I know that they are doing some really interesting stuff with that. So looking forward to finishing that out. But certainly want to know what you guys thought about this episode. So please comment below. Let me know your favorite parts, your least favorite parts. And we had quite a few uh, things happen in this episode, so... I want to know what your favorite, like, specific moment was. Like, obviously, that's a part of your favorite parts, but there were so many different things that really stood out. Like, Foggy had a great moment again. Uh, Carrie, Karen had her own own great moment. But despite the amazingly well-done action scene, I think my favorite would honestly have to just be the talk between Matt and Frank. And, like, the whole scene, like, all the different scenes put together, like, their entire time together... It was just, like, my favorite stuff. And I think my favorite moment specifically, um, I believe it was all at once. And it was the scene, it was the part where Frank, I don't know what he was taking off of that billboard, but he climbed up the ladder and he was, like, it looked like he was unscrewing one of the lights or something. But that scene, I think, was the best because um, I think that's when Matt was talking about people having a certain sense of light and stuff, despite the ending with Grotto and how that was a very tense scene. I just love them talking about you know, their different, you know, their differences, really, as human beings, and then it, you know, it ended with that little hint as to the one thing, verbally at least, that can make Frank kind of tick, and it's calling him crazy, so that specific sequence is definitely my favorite scene out of the episode, although it was definitely a crazy good one, but like I said, want to know your favorite parts, least favorite parts, um, specifically, you know, what you guys really loved about this episode, so please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.